the female reproductive cycles. The first of the female reproductive cycles that we'll look at is the ovarian cycle. We begin the ovarian cycle with what's happening in the ovary, as it is named. We start with what we call an immature follicle. These have primary oocytes that are formed before birth and are located in the ovaries. So ladies, you are born with all of the eggs that you will ever have. They're just immature. There's some cells around the oocytes called granulosal cells. A hormone called GnRH, or gonadotropin-releasing hormone, is released from the hypothalamus and acts on the anterior pituitary. The anterior pituitary then releases the gonadotropins, FSH and LH. FSH is going to stimulate the follicle to grow and start secreting estrogen. Something called the zona pellucida now forms around the primary oocyte. The zona pellucida is a glycoprotein layer. It's secreted by the granulosal cells, so it's going to actually be surrounding the oocyte itself. And we also have the development of something called an antrum. The antrum is a fluid-filled space inside of the follicle. Taking a look here, on the right-hand side, we've got the primary oocyte. It's surrounded by some granulosal cells. And in number two, the next thing that happens is that the zona pellucida gets secreted from those granulosal cells, and it surrounds the oocyte. Now, what happens is that the follicle starts to suck in some fluid, and we start to begin creating an antrum. The more fluid we get inside of there, the more pressure that's going to build up, and eventually we're going to have this whole follicle rupture and expel our oocyte. Now, the primary oocyte is undergoing meiosis 1. The secondary oocyte then is formed as a result of that division. This oocyte will contain 23 chromosomes, so half the normal number. It also creates something called a first polar body. This is mostly DNA with no cytoplasm or organelles, and in most cases the polar body is going to degenerate and uh, die. At this point with our secondary follicle, the, great, the mature follicle is formed. We've got a secondary oocyte inside. We call this thing a graphene follicle. Meanwhile, we've got rising levels of estrogen. The rising levels of estrogen cause the anterior pituitary gland to release a surge of luteinizing hormone, or LH. That LH surge causes ovulation. That secondary oocyte is then released from the follicle, and it can be swept up by the fimbriae now into the fallopian tube. Fertilization of an egg, so should that egg come in contact with the sperm and be fertilized, is going to cause meiosis II to complete and create an ovum. So taking a look here, we can see that in our mature follicle, that's number four, that's our graphian follicle, we've got a very, very large antrum, and we've got our secondary oocyte in that polar body. If ovulation takes place as a result of an LH surge, the follicle ruptures and expels that secondary oocyte. Now, what's left of the follicle after the oocyte is released is called the corpus luteum. These are the materials left from the ruptured follicle. The corpus luteum does play a role, however, in the ovarian cycle. It secretes progesterone and estrogen. This prepares the endometrium for implantation of an embryo. It also feeds back and inhibits further gonadotropin release. Meanwhile, we don't want to be creating an extra oocyte to be fertilized if we've already got, say, a fertilized egg in the female reproductive tract. If there is fertilization, the embryo will start to release something called human chorionic gonadotropin. HCG is what's recognized by the home pregnancy test. Um, so keep this in mind that the embryo is actually releasing the hormone. So if you take a home pregnancy test and it says positive that you are pregnant, um, they're very, very reliable because if there wasn't an embryo in there, there wouldn't be any release of this hormone. 
In the event that fertilization does not take place, egg and sperm never meet, then the corpus luteum will degenerate. And, of course, menses will begin. So taking a look here, you can see that what's left of that follicle after it ruptures is the corpus luteum. That's going to be responsible for releasing progesterone and estrogen and maintaining the lining of the uterus. Uh, if fertilization does not take place, then the corpus luteum simply degenerates. Now, we can also look at what's called the uterine cycle. The uterine cycle is an explanation of what's happening inside of the uterus based on these hormonal changes. Days one to five would be the menstrual phase. This is obviously variable in women. It could last a couple days. It could last, you know, longer than five days, but this is when menstruation is actually taking place. We named the beginning of uh, the uterine cycle with menses because that's an easy way to pinpoint. You'd always be able to say the first day of the last menstrual period was. Days six to 13 are the proliferative phase. This is basically when the lining of the uterus is starting to increase. It's due to an increase in estrogen. Day 14 is mid-cycle. That's when ovulation takes place. And again, just remember that ovulation is the result of a surge in LH. Days 15 to 28, then, are called the secretory phase. The endometrium continues to build up, and, of course, if fertilization does not occur, then it will be shed. High levels of estrogen and progesterone at this time inhibit another follicle from developing, again, because humans are normally only going to have one offspring versus a litter. All right, so taking a look here, you can see in the bottom picture, day one is the first day of menses. That goes to about day five, at which time we end up in that proliferative phase because we start building up the inner layer of the endometrium again. Additionally, that's when we get a spike in estrogen. That spike in estrogen causes a LH surge that would happen in the ovarian uh, phase. And then again, we have high levels of progesterone and estrogen towards the end of the cycle, hopefully increasing the endometrial lining for implantation of an embryo. Taking a look at the uh, hormonal control here, we can see that in the menstrual and proliferative phase that GnRH is acting on the anterior pituitary, causing the release of FSH and LH. That's going to cause follicular growth and development in the ovary. That will, of course, cause the release of estrogen, which feeds back and inhibits further GnRH and uh, gonadotropin release. During the mid-cycle, you can see that the hypothalamus releases GnRH onto the anterior pituitary. That's going to cause an LH surge. The release of estrogen is going to give positive feedback to cause more LH release, and that's going to eventually give us ovulation. And then in the end of the luteal phase, the end of the um, phase here, we've got FSH and LH both being inhibited by estrogen and progesterone from the corpus luteum.